The Saints were so close to murdering the Falcons franchise for good with the greatest comeback win in Saints history. Unvaccinated corner, he's back, and the receiver ruined our dreams. Thomas, hit the intro. G'day, it's Stevie from 12 Ninja here. And look, if you like American football, you should check out Saints Happy Hour podcast. I personally know fuck all about American football, other than it's a bunch of massive blokes wearing spandex, shoulder pads and helmets, running around with a throw on a football. In Australia, you don't throw footballs. You punch it or you kick it. And there's um, no protection. They're all naked and there's sharks and crocodiles fired out of cannons onto the field and we all stand around and drink blood watching it. But American football's your thing, you know what to do. Saints Happy Hour podcast. Stick it in your ear hole. All right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour podcast. We are live on Twitch. The voice is feeling a little better, huh, Ralph? It's a little little bit better. I had a little... little uh, honey beer, uh, a little tea, got the voice, but we'll see, see if it falls apart at like 945. Don't, mm. don't, don't count your chickens yet, kids. Hey, we are live on the Twitch as all, on, on Twitch as always. If you aren't, follow us on Twitch and remember to subscribe to Saints Happy Hour wherever you get your podcast. Also, become an annual patron at Patreon slash Saints Happy Hour to get the best Saints podcast every day and you get a month for free. Now, listen. I want to get excited because people are supporting the show like crazy, and it's awesome. We have three new subs since our last show. CJPM48, thank you. Who dat Army Guy yeah. 504. I'm assuming that he is in the military. Thank you for your service and your support of the show. And CDWPT95, they all subscribe since the last show. They're awesome. Remember, guys. If you sub with Amazon Prime last month, you can sub again this month too. You basically get one totally free sub every month. All you have to do is click the subscribe button below the stream. Choose the option subscribe with Prime. Boom. Show us some love because it doesn't cost you anything and it helps us a ton. And now Thomas did an amazing thing. He set it up to where if you subscribe uh, to us through Twitch, uh, you get access to our amazing Discord community where we are having so much fun. People were getting amazing jokes today. Thomas is going to have some of those later. Just DM us. Say you're a Twitch Prime supporter, and we'll give you the Discord invite. It's amazing. You get in there. And by the way, Twitch clips, clip funny moments. We have clips channel on Discord with the best clips. It's amazing. You should do it. Dave, me and you were in, det- in attendance yesterday. The Saints, oh, yeah. they came up short. It would have been the most greatest, I think, regular season win in Saints history. It would have collapsed the Falcons franchise into itself because they've had a bunch of collapses. They've collapsed 28-3 to in the Super Bowl, but they've never done it against the Saints. Yeah. And, oh, my God, Dave, it was so close. I could feel it. I, 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 I really thought it was going to happen yesterday. It I was... figured the Saints were going to do something on defense, and boom, it was going to be a party. Yeah, you, well, I, you know, uh, last week Peyton called out the f- crowd, the home fans, said they didn't think they were loud enough. And, I mean, in that fourth quarter, once we were down by one score uh, and we were getting those three and outs, uh, a lot of that was because the Dome was freaking loud, man. It was I a mean, playoff it was, game loud. It was, it was se- yes, it was seriously loud. And... Damn, if that didn't feel good. I mean, like, this was the first game I've been to. No mask, full stadium, like, really exciting. Like, this felt like old times. My gosh, this felt like old times. And to Andrew's point from the post-game show yesterday, uh, you know, the ending felt very uh, playoff-esque. It felt very much like a uh, 2017 uh, uh, playoff exit to to, to the... uh, (laughs) To the Minnesota Vikings, um, but uh, but you know what? Back to Atlanta for a second, though. I was thinking about it today, um, and I was listening to pardon my take. I'm a little concerned. Uh, the city of Atlanta now, uh, they've got a, a World Series championship. Don't remind. They've me. had the soccer. They have, <laughs> have the soccer uh. championship. 
Um, the Falcons are holding on to leads. Who cares about the soccer? In the fourth quarter, the Falcons are 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 winning games that they almost blow. I'm a little worried. I think Atlanta's having a moment, and may, I don't know. Maybe this is you know I, I've said this before, guys. The 28 to three stuff. I think maybe we we hit it too hard, and we're gonna get punished at some point. It's gonna come to an end, and this is gonna blow up in our we face. We got punished. It was and 2018. Be, that's the punishment. This might be. This might can be we, the start of it. Andrew, this can we talk about Dave? He looks like the un- with the hoodie. He looks like the Unabomber. Dave, if you mailed me a package, I wouldn't accept it. I'd I'd be scared <laughs> it was gonna blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Ignore the white. Ignore the white powder. In if the I envelope. had Dave Terracott, I probably would wear a hoodie like that all the time too. Yeah, like uh, this, this hoodie makes me look less bald. You don't know what's under here. It could be anything. I, I do wonder if the Saints had pulled off that comeback and they had won. It would have, my God. Oh, my God. I, I, I see, oh, I see CWP. I see, C, sorry, CDWPT. I see him in the chat say that 24 to 6 would have become the new 28 to 3. I tweeted that. I said that too. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I, I, I wonder, I wonder if that's true. I wonder if what this podcast I, is like right now if we're just like 28 to 3 is old news it it's 24 been, to 6 now it would have it would have t- 28 to 3 definitely would have been old news because this would have been ours because this would have been the saints yeah. doing this to the falcons <laughs> right. not the yeah, we're, we're kind of morose we're kind of somber you know losing to the falcons is always you know hello darkness my old friend <laughs> but but <laughs> but uh yeah, there yeah, it is. exactly <laughs> um but i wonder I just picture what we w- would be like right now. I mean, it'd be, had they that's won. That's what makes me sad. We'd be is, six look, and two. We'd be in first place. I mean, would we would have embarrassed. Would we would have embarrassed and, the Falcons. I mean, I can only imagine what the, the show would have been like. How the Saints we would be. Been. The Saints would be a half game out of the two seed in the NFC if they'd have held on yesterday. Like. Mm. Because mm-hmm. every like every that. NFC team right, that was ahead right. of them lost. Yeah. Except all right, for let's, Arizona let's move on. This is getting too. No, hard. but I, I did have like, one other thing to say about my my game Mark experience. I, my <laughs> I took my buddy Matt to the game, and uh, he had to go to the bathroom uh, right around the fourth quarter. And he gets up, and I say, "Look," and this is before the Saints scored their first comeback touchdown. And I said, "Hey, if the Saints score here." You can't come back. You got to stay up there. Okay, that's fine. So it's Saints score a touchdown. All right. Well, he texts me. He's like, "I'm not coming down." I was like, "Okay." So I'm sitting there by myself now for the <laughs> most of the fourth quarter, watching this game, all of this excitement. So then the three, you know, the th- third three and out, and then the Saints score again, uh, and he's still up there, and I feel weird because like this is like I'm I- I've conflicted because I'm sitting here watching maybe the greatest come back against the Falcons in Saints history and I'm not even enjoying it with my friend that I brought to the game because he's stuck up there because he can't come down because of superstition so then it was anyway so this better not were, this story better not end with he comes back to sit next to you right after the last touchdown so the Saints pull ahead and he comes back down no, no. <laughs> and he says well you know I they came back, so I was up there till they came back. So now they came back, so I came oh down. Oh my god! <laughs> All this time, Jay, 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 uh, Joey Russ Russo is trying so hard to, to blame this on Ralph in the chat, and he was texting right. me about that earlier. But it, it's no, clearly it's I'm Dave's friend this that's time. responsible. Yeah. No. Well, no. I want to say I my friend is off the hook. I'm going to let him off the hook, and I'll tell you why I'm going to let him off the hook. I'm going to let him your off friend the- go to the bathroom on camera though, Dave. <laughs> I don't know who's got cameras installed in the Superdome bathroom. There could be a couple of pervs out there. Uh, but I'm letting him off the hook because, again, immediately after we scored that touchdown, the both of you, you guys both knew that how this was going to end, and you texted all of us on our podcast message, and you were like, prepare for sadness. Like, just, you know... Get the lube yeah. ready now and get ready. And it's like, because we all knew this was going to happen. So well, I don't blame they, my buddy. We were, we were kind of due for that. Yeah, when well, they missed, I don't blame when they my missed buddy. the two-point conversion and I looked at the clock, I was like, oh, no. No. Yep. We were all feeling it. We were feeling it against Tampa, too. Probably even oh, more yeah, so. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. Uh, you like, I mean, so you win some, you lose some. But looking back at it, if you had to pick, Andrew – you were only going to get – you You had to blow the Tampa game or you had to blow this game. You would have rather had lost the Tampa game, right? Like coming back yeah. from 24 to 6 would have been amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think like I as think much that, fun as it was yeah. owning Brady, right? yeah, crushing Atlanta's soul would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you give me the choice, I I pick. Well, it I mean, for the standings the though, for the standings though, I think beating the Bucks is probably better. Maybe, but I mean, Atlanta's, <sighs> Atlanta's a division <laughs> yeah. win. Andrew, before we get to Sean Payton's sound, I, we need to men- we need to tell the people unvaccinated corner is back. He got roasted for the game basically winning play. But the secondary in general was awful. Well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that, Ralph, because I feel like there's been a lot of... Oh, so close on vaccinated corner. There's been so much complaining about the receivers, which is fair. There's been so much uh, trashing Adam Troutman, and all of that is legit. But... I don't really feel like I saw anything different from you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we've we've known what they've been all year. We just saw the same face we've seen all season from Kenny Stills and Adam Troutman. It's not like this was an aberration. It's not like I'm stunned that they dropped a bunch of passes and sucked in this game. <laughs> I, I think we have one one am I, correct me if I'm wrong, we have one one hundred yard receiver and it's Alvin Kamara. That's the only hundred yard receiver that's, we have this season. That's correct. So, so None of that surprised me. And and I just feel like the Saints fans are so focused on how bad our receivers are, how bad Troutman is, that they're completely letting the secondary off the hook. And Adebo on that play that we're that we're showing here. Um Lattimore was awful. Chauncey Gardner Johnson drops an interception right in his hand, gave up a bunch of plays. Marcus Williams was terrible. Um so I don't know like those are the guys i actually expect to play well those are the guys <laughs> who typically win games for us ralph please, Jesus, please Jesus. sorry <laughs> if you're gonna do that please mute yourself or at least put the mic away I hit the wrong mouth. button sorry my god man <laughs> holy <laughs> shit all right anyway ralph spreading corona through god. the internet man <laughs> yeah um Anyway, yeah, I feel My like bad. Saints fans are letting the secondary off the hook. Like, that's that's who we count on. Th- those are the guys that are supposed to play well. Like, no one is talking about Lattimore and his recently signed, you know, freshly minted $100 million contract. Where the heck was he? Well, here's the, here's the thing, Dave. The secondary from the first play to the last play was terrible. The only difference was the this first or second play of the game the dude dropped it for Atlanta, but it was the same yeah. play. He was open up the sideline. Yeah. Uh, my, my feelings on the secondary are, uh, I think now after this game, uh, they are a unit that they just like the saints themselves. They're a yo-yo unit, just like the saints are a yo-yo team. Uh, uh, they will come out and play great games against very talented Right, wide receiving cores, and then they will come out and lay absolute duds yeah. against teams like the Falcons and the Giants. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, I now after this game, one of my takeaways is uh, is that fact, and I, I'm just going to live with that. We're all going to have yeah. to live with that. Joey's well, saying this w- on the chat. He he says that they're giving up too many explosive plays, and that is so true. I mean, the Giants game and Falcons games are the two that stand out, but yeah. they are giving up a lot of big, big passing plays. Well, and well, the thing with the defense, is, like you said, Andrew, we expected of the wide receivers that the defense is sort of their, their thing, like they're a good defensive team. But I want to get to Sean Payton sound because I want you guys to listen to the Sean Payton town sound because he – to me, sounds like the rest of us. He is sick and tired of the wide receivers being a trash can. Thomas, play that sound. Man, he had a few throws in there that were, I mean, not primary receivers and played with poise, brought us back. I thought overall, uh, I felt like it was good. Um, and then, of course, we'll look at it and, and grade it. But I thought we dropped a few balls uh, more than our fair share and – like I said, you know, we're third and long. I don't know how many times with the, the penalties in the first half, but it's frustrating. He's fed up. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me, Dave. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, a, everyone 
and their mother. You know, Ray Charles <laughs> could have seen how horrible uh, the Saints wide receiving core was. I mean, it was very, uh, you know, and to, and to me, to me, like being there in person and seeing it in firsthand uh, and up close and personal, uh, it was, it, look, it looked even worse. It looked even worse than I think it does on TV. And, you know, here's a question. You've, you've got, you've got, a, you've got, you, you've got guys that are just, these are second and third, third tier guys that you're asking yeah, I, to be, to, you're asking to be number ones and number twelve. I, yeah, I, I, I just want to go back real quick to how much these guys are paid. It's like, besides Traquan, who I, was like a third round pick and is still on his rookie deal. Um, those guys are all making the NFL equivalent of minimum wage, right? I mean, Kenny Stills is on a minimum veteran deal. Deontay was a UDFA. Callaway was a UDFA. I mean, n- th- these guys are paid about what they're worth <laughs> Look for the NFL. This, I had Thomas create us a drop reel. I don't know. This. Yeah, well, where's the Benny Hill music? I told you guys I wanted this. <laughs> I don't know. I think you, the Benny Hill, this is not funny though, Dave. I think he needs the sad violin well, for this. And a lot of these, and I'm, <laughs> I'm being dead I mean, serious. Look, a lot oh, of these are were on my side of the field, like and right in front of me. And I mem- like I remember seeing these, and it's just it's like very frustrating. Where's well, the Trumpin one? Oh, oh, wait, I, I'm sorry, fish the fish guy. I I don't I'm not even using his name anymore. Well, here's not, my I'm question. Not very, I'm not I was very almost going to have but- for Odell Beckham, but I want him so bad. Here's here's the thing. I was going to oh. ask Budridge to create a trivia question, but it was too late to to get it in because he he already had it built. But Andrew, the Saints. Do not have a receiver or a tight end on pace to catch 50 balls. Now, Kamara will, but can you remember a time in your entire life watching the Saints where they didn't have at least one dude catch 50 balls, a no. tight end or a receiver? I cannot. Never. Even in the Ditka years, they had Sean Dawkins. I mean, they had Cam Cleet. Like, they this had dudes catch out of the passes. 70s. They don't have a receiver or tight end on on pace to catch 50 passes. This, this sounds straight out of the 70s, Ralph. And <laughs> the fact that it's happening with Sean Payton is just... It's the post-Drew Brees era, I guess, man. I, I mean... So well, where, let's where get does, into... Where does, let's, where, does our ang- where does our anger lie? Like, does our anger go all the way back to... Um, the Saints back to last year when they asked Michael Thomas not to get surgery and try to come back, or does it lie with mm-hmm. Michael Thomas for uh, waiting to have surgery after being mad with the organization or frustrated with the organization? Because if we have Michael Thomas, you know, I, I think a lot of this gets fixed. They, uh, I think I, that changes a lot of things. Yeah. I think it changed a lot of things, but Dave, honestly, knowing what they knew in the off season where Michael Thomas wasn't getting in touch with them and they couldn't contact him, they should have hedged their bets and gotten their ass a wide receiver in the draft. Like they should have been, or been like, you know what? Michael Thomas, we ain't talked to him in three weeks, Andrew. Maybe we ought to keep Emmanuel Sanders. Maybe we ought to figure that out. Like they should have hedged against Michael Thomas not coming yeah. back because they had signs that it was going wrong starting in February. And if you want to blame them for something, I think that's a fair thing to blame them. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing's unfortunate. I don't even want to talk about Michael Thomas. You know, it's like if he comes back, he comes back, but he's not on the team. So like, I, I like, I don't even want to spend energy on Michael Thomas. Cause I just feel like it's, it's a waste. Like he he's not in the, he's not he's not doing it. He's out. He's out. You know it's he's not a waste. Talking about o- Odell Beckham. Saints need well, to get. I, him. I do have some good news. I, if you're worried about the Saints receiver situation, uh, there is a silver lining here that their best one, Deontay Harris, may be getting suspended soon. So. Oh. oh, I thought you were going to say Chris Hogan was coming back out of retirement. I was not really excited. I well, I, yeah, well don't play with my Hogan. Like that. You know Hogan retired because he he got suspended. Ralph, no one talks okay? about that. But Ralph, he, he, okay. Hopefully he muted himself because he had another <laughs> seizure. I was I was legit worried he was having like a seizure. Damn! I coughed so violently my headset fell off. Was it my Chris Hogan joke? No, it's just well, that's why you need a yeti. 
Well, <laughs> yep. yep, get yourself a Yeti. Um, jo join the club. Look, Buy another OB one. OBJ, uh, if OBJ was on the, seriously, if OBJ was on the Saints yesterday, if he was out on that field for the Saints, he would have, I think he probably would have lit it up. I think they would have gone to him pretty much on every play. And I think he probably would have lit it up. And I think he would have had a hell of a day. And uh, that's potentially a selling point for OBJ for getting him. Uh, from everything I've read, he wants to go to Seattle. Uh, I know people say, well, Seattle's not really a contender, but obviously. Hey, Russell was a but they I have wanna... Russell Wilson. He thinks he's a contender. He wants to go somewhere where he's going. He's a wide receiver. He wants to go somewhere where he's going to catch balls. As, just well, as I want to. You, you say much... Seattle's not a contender, but Russell. No, Wilson Seattle is a contender. Oh, no, yeah. oh, 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 well, no, oh, oh, Seattle's not a contender in the in the playoffs. They're not a contender for the Super Bowl, but they're they're a playoff contender. Well, the NFC is trash. But I want to say this: Chris in the Discord had the best. Odell Beckham joke. He said the Saints wide receivers should be declared a federal disaster area and Goodell should award the Saints Beckham as disaster relief. I I, I just I just cannot stand Beckham the locker room person. Like you I don't know, know. I, he's he has a he's a, he's like a, he throws tantrums on the field, but I don't think he's ever been like a bad Team. He's a quitter. He's a quitter. But he's he likes leaving. Shit. He likes shit. He's, Dave. He's leaving Cleveland because he's unhappy. Like, like it's we, Cleveland though. Like, he, what's he, to he's like also about clearly all about Odell? They Beckham. just beat Cincinnati. What do you mean? What's Selfish, to like about Cleveland? Player. They I just, mean the city. It's dreary. It's. I, I just. I, my guy. I, uh, he. He just rubs me the wrong way. Like. You know, you signed a contract and like you want to like leave at the end of the season and the off season. You want to try to get traded. That's that's one thing. But like just quitting on the team in the middle of a season because you're not happy. I, I and, and it's like, and what are the Browns going to do? Obviously, they got to just get rid of him. They got to nobody yeah. wants that in their all, locker room. All that's, that's fair, it. Dave. All that's fair. But he's averaging 37 yards a game receiving, and for the Saints, that's like Hall of Fame, right? Now. I'm not talking about the football player. I, I want him as a football player. Yes. I wish there was. I wish there was a way that he could come to the Saints. He could show up to games. Uh, play the games, and then when he's done, he like goes to his own house. If you can promise me, four and he doesn't hang out with the team at all. I don't want him you, around the team if, at all. If you can promise me four catches for thirty-seven yards, like I, I would <laughs> ex explode the cap, Mickey Loomis. Do whatever he, you got to do. He Dude. would do. He would. He could do way better than that. And and with Trevor Simeon, uh, he would he would be just fine. But I, I, Trevor Simeon, honestly, is the reason why. There's no way he's coming to the Saints. Uh, there's the, the the quarterback position what? here is unstable, and yeah, there's but no I mean, telling what the future holds. But I and, mean, can't you? Couldn't you? If you're the Saints, couldn't you? Like Kawan Alexander is a former LSU teammate. Apparently, they're pretty close friends. Like, couldn't the Saints players call him up and, and convince him? And couldn't Sean Payton be like, "Hey, go to Seattle, go to Kansas City, enjoy being the third guy, go to Green Bay, be the third guy, come here, dude." I will get you touches. Like, yeah, I don't think they have no shot at all. And if Beckham is more concerned, whether whatever his people say or whatever he says in the media, but if he's technically personally more concerned with his stats and catching, you know, and putting up stats than he is really with winning a Super Bowl, then yeah, the Saints could. I well, think most pitch, receivers are like that, pitch, though, Dave. Most I receivers. Know. I think I know. The I know. Pitch, I think the pitch to Odell Beckham is, look, I'm one of the best play callers in the league, if well, not the best. I'm going to scheme some shit. And <laughs> look, I know you're, you're going to be on a one-year deal, probably for not, a lot less than you want. And if you want to enter free agency and make, make a bag and, and make a bunch of money again, I'm going to give you 10 targets a game. I can promise you that. And you will get your chance to showcase and show the league that you still got it. So just show that's, show that, him that's, all of that's the just, pitch. Just I would just show him all of Kenny Stills' drops and be like, these could have been yours. <laughs> that could be those you. could have been yours. Yeah, could you be could yours. have had all of those touches and all of those do you, catches. Do you do you superimpose Beckham's head <laughs> on the reel 
and you're like, that could be you, yes. Odell. You could be. You could do this with one hand. Your one hand is better than Kenny Stills's <laughs> two hands. Um, but also, just uh, Andrew, you know, you mentioned what the pitch is to um, uh, to Odell, and I think everything you said is all fine and dandy. But I think really the first part of that pitch is, you know, you can come home. You know, come yeah. home, be well, close to home, play for New Orleans, uh, play for the team. I would assume you grew up watching. I mean, I know he went to grade school on South Carrollton. Uh, he I mean, human. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, he's got to be a Saints fan. Well, here's, a, here's the thing. You know, we had mentioned Trevor Simeon, and we had slandered him a little bit, saying that he wouldn't be appealing to Odell Beckham. But we need to talk about Trevor Simeon. He, in his post-game press conference, he couldn't look more... Oh, oh! I think his internet crapped well, out. <laughs> Ralph, Ralph, but he's talking about Trevor Simeon, and I know what he's trying to say. He's trying to say that he loves. Oh, he's back. Oh, is he back? Ralph, speak. Oh, am well, I back? You're yeah, back. You're back. you are now. Just yeah. start over from Trevor <laughs> Simeon and how he was dressed. That's Trevor that's Simeon. He looks like a suburban dad at Costco after the game. He looks like he's at Costco going to buy 80 packs of cheeses for Little League. Play the sound, Thomas. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, it's frustrating for all of us. It's not me, but it's just, you know, you're, you're worried about the next play and it's, you know, we got to get it fixed and the urgency certainly rises, but you do what, what it takes to get it right. Um, so just, you know, yelling or doing whatever, or getting worried, that doesn't really help the cause, right? You're uh, just focused on the next play and getting it right. And we got good players, so guys are going to make plays. We just got to Give them opportunities. Do we really have good players, though? <laughs> what do you, Dave? What do you prefer? Do you prefer the Trevor Simeon, I'm going to Costco look, or do you prefer the Drew Brees, I'm a newsboy look? I mean, he's just just because he's wearing a T-shirt. Like that's that's why he looks like he's going to Costco. He's not. Do, Dave, do you, are you taking a dump? Do you think Trevor Simeon? <laughs> yeah, he's in the bathroom. He oh, he called him out. Nice. That's the bathroom. Do you think, I remember do you the think... scene of the crime. Uh, don't let. Don't change the subject, Dave. <laughs> Put, Thomas, play think... the Law and Order theme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you think Trevor Simeon should go out there with a uh, with a, a Squid Game mask? I mean, Dave, are you gonna mute before you flush? Hopefully. <laughs> God, yes, please. This, this show Dave, is complete. Dave, are you, uh, are you peeing sitting down? <laughs> oh, my God. Damn. Oh, my Damn. God. Damn. You are disgraceful. It's... <laughs> you, you are the Saints wide receiver of podcasts. Uh, I'm going to let it, Alvin Kamara. That's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. Completely disrespectful, Dave. Anyway, have we, have we, when can we start making fun of the fish guy? We, we, we can, <laughs> that we fish can make guy. Fun, we can make fun of Troutman now. I want to say this, Thomas put up the picture. I was worried that I did that because I'm crippled and I have trouble working my phone. I was worried that I didn't get a picture, but I'm pretty sure when I was walking out the dome with my brother, I saw Troutman's family because Thomas, <laughs> if you zoom in, there's like three or four people wearing Troutman's jerseys. And the only people at the Superdome that are wearing Adam Troutman's jerseys, Dave, have to be Adam Troutman's family. That's for the sure. only That's possible Matt, explanation for that. Matt Ulrich says, Dave, you just took a fish guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because I'm almost positive. You know, the black and gold shop isn't selling Troutman jerseys. I'm pretty sure that's got to be a custom order on uh, NFLshop.com. Uh, and uh, I don't know one. They're giving, they're giving, they're paying Saints fans to wear them they're, right now. They're leaving them on every chair in the Superdome when you get there, when you get to your seat. <laughs> <laughs> Wave this Troutman jersey around on third down. Don't wear it. Don't wear it. They offered to when pay home, me. Burn it. Fathead yeah. offered to pay me if I would have three Troutmans on I was the wall. Say, oh, I refused. Fuck, that's what was going to be my joke. Damn it. I was going to say, Ralph, take that Troutman fathead down. <laughs> throw it in the trash. <laughs> yeah, damn it. I blew it. He beat me to it. Ralph. But yeah, I'd love to know why Jawan Johnson was inactive. Oh, that's it. Okay. 
Here's here we go. Here we go. You set me off now with the Juwan Johnson. This has nothing to do. Ooh, fumble. This has nothing to do with Juwan Johnson. But uh, I think uh, I think we need to have a funeral for a little Jordan Humphrey. I think he's dead. I think he's I I. If you he's, he's on the run. Stop away. it. Get some help. I know, but he's not. He wouldn't be. I don't think he would be active. I don't think he would be. I don't know if he would be playing regardless. And I just feel like uh, if he can't even get on the field with this crop of wide receivers, like that's it. He's never. He's never going to play. He's never, like this is it. This who's is de- who's deeper in Sean Payton's doghouse right now: Little Jordan Humphrey or Malcolm Roach? Oh, I would have to say it's got to be little Jordan Humphrey because he we are so desperate at wide receiver. We're not as desperate at uh, defensive tackle or pass rush. Uh, we are so desperate at wide receiver. And if he won't even look at little Jordan Humphrey, then uh, it's it's really got to be bad. Well, He's really got to be pissed. Andrew, I think he wants to put Troutman deep, deep, deep in the doghouse, but he can't. Because he has nowhere else to go. No, yeah. Troutman did. Wait, did the play? I, mean, I got to look this up. Did the play? Where is Nick Vanette? Did the play did report he, come out? How many, how, come many snaps, how many snaps did uh, Troutman have? I feel like he was out there like 85% of the game. I can look this up. Yes. I feel like he was out there all the time. And this goes back to like the whole like. Yeah, I uh, agree. I agree. He was there for most of it. Yeah. And this goes back to the whole. Um, <sighs> What's Hill? Uh, I can't. I can't believe I can't. I'm not remembering. Is him? No. Our Josh old, Hill. Our old, yeah, Josh Hill. Um, you know, we we didn't realize how valuable he was. You know, until he's gone, and you don't realize all the things he does. And no, I think we knew it. We gave Josh Hill love on this podcast. Well, I think we understood it. Well, I feel like Troutman. I feel like Troutman is 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 su- supposed to be filling that role, and he just he's just not dependable. He just never he he doesn't do the Josh. He's He's just a wannabe Josh Hill. Oh, I mean, he this catch right here that we're showing, the one where he actually caught it over the middle, took a shot. I mean, that was a good catch, and so that I'm was. like slightly conflicted, you know, when I when I give him shit because he, I mean, but that one, that one he should have had. Well, they, yeah, that one he should have had. That was right. Right in the, the back. thing is, back. like, that Tra- fourth down play, like, if he of the snap. caught that, yeah. like, he could have, he should have caught that and ran for, like, 15 more yards. Yeah, you heard that? 88% of the snaps. He was out there for almost every 67, freaking... 67, 67 of 76. I mean, like, mm, that's, that is, that's your starting tight end. This, that guy is your starting tight end. That's the best tight end you got. That's... Uh, I mean, God. What's that? What's the clip from the we movie? We talk about needing wide guy... receivers. We need tight ends. We need a freaking tight end. We don't have a tight end. <laughs> Why Pick up the never, dude that Detroit just cut. I forget his Taysom name. Hill. He's old and, so, and washed. I don't know why they don't throw. I it have to. Him. I have to. Let's talk about Taysom Hill. Did he not I get have, open? I have to assume. You know, we talked about it on the post game yesterday. One, it seemed like they were limiting Taysom Hill. They didn't want him yeah. to get hit. They weren't. They weren't using him as much as they would normally yeah, use him. Right. And that's fine. And that's totally fine. And you want to put him in on that random series? Okay, whatever. That's weird. That but, was bizarre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. Um, just well, then he was cooking, right? He like right. he did. He like, 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 All right, like we got a shot in the pass, arm, nineteen yard pass. Like, things yes. are happening, yes. and then yeah. and then he gets benched for Simeon, and then Simeon fumbles like right after that. Do you, I don't know. <laughs> what the hell I thought was that? when 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 Taysom came in, I thought I, I I assumed that they were built. I assumed that they were most of the game yeah. they were setting the Falcons up for something, and they were planning on doing something. And I assumed it was going to have to do with Taysom. So when Taysom first went out there. I mean, I assume that there was going to be some kind of big play or some kind of trickery or whatever that they were going to try to do. It didn't seem to come. Uh, I, I don't know why, but 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 Taysom as a quarterback, can we just talk about that? Like seriously, like moving forward, you know, Taysom, he he kind of got a full week of practice, I guess, this week. Um, Peyton said post game, the last game that. He alluded to the fact that Taysom was a guy who needed the full week of preparation, the full week of practice. I mean, he played a little. That's what I was going to start in a game. But so, like, who starts next week? Who that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. He's playing. Sean Payton was like, "We'll see." He's playing coy. Andrew, do you think they go to Taysom? I don't. I, mean, I, I, I don't think Simeon played poorly. I I don't think Simeon's done anything to justify. I mean, unless you want to 
knock him for the fumble, but I, I blame that on Armstead, you know? Yeah. So I, I thought Simeon played, I mean, he almost rallied them to a win. It was really, like inc- it was really incredible what he did. Now I know he got bailed out a little bit by the pass interference down the field and the, and the rough and the passer call obviously was a big help as well. Uh, but I don't know. He made some plays down the stretch there and, and I don't blame him for the saints being scoreless in the first half. Cause they literally dropped every, I, I don't know how many more times he could have hit receivers in the chest or hands. Uh, the fourth <laughs> down, the fourth down drop by Troutman was just awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenny Stills, you know, he look, the thing about him is that I saw Trevor Simeon throw some balls that Jameis refused to throw all year. I think Jameis is so in his own head about the interceptions. And like, I'm, I'm not criticizing Jameis because I think he did the best with what he had to work with. And I, statistically, he was real solid. He led the Saints to five and two. So, like, no criticism, criticism of Jameis. But I will say Jameis didn't throw a lot of 50-50 balls where it was like, Hey, receiver, go make a play. I feel like Simeon was doing that. He 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 had he gave Troutman a chance on a couple 50-50s. We're like, hey, try to go make this play. I'm gonna throw you, throw it to you in tight coverage. Kenny Stills, I'm gonna put this ball, I'm gonna high point it to you, and you're gonna have to take a hit, but like go up and see if you can catch it. And I mean, he was just getting no help, no surprise, because I think all these guys are just super inconsistent. But Simeon to me was pulling the trigger and taking some risks uh, that Winston really wasn't. the the whole The whole quarterback situation is this. This whole thing is fascinating to me, and I, I'm I'm loving this. But I mean, like seriously, let's think about this. Uh, you know, Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill was paid all this money. You know, uh, yeah, I know a lot of it is phony baloney, monopoly money, or whatever. It's it's fictional, but but he you know, is pay- making fourteen million this yeah. year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. he's doing very well. Uh, paid all this money, was always touted by Peyton as he's my guy. Um, I definitely see him as a starting quarterback. Uh, at the very least, he's going to compete with Jameis in training camp. He competes with Jameis in training camp as quarterback, and so here we are now, um, and. Jameis gets injured, and now Simeon now comes in, and Simeon plays okay, and Taysom. I, I just, I don't, I don't know if any of this. I don't know if Taysom is ever going to be the starting quarterback of this team. It just seems like <laughs> it just he seems was like last it, year for a little bit over Jameis. Yeah, I guess. Well, I don't. I don't know. I just here's the here's. I don't here's, know. But 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 I I I just want to talk about Simeon. I like Simeon. I really do. I really liked what I saw from him from him yesterday. Um, you don't have any of he he gets rid of the ball quicker. You know, you don't have any of those moments where he's just scrambling around in the back, like looking like Simeon really can get rid of the ball quickly. Uh, I like. I, yeah. Yes, I like his. I like his. He throws a good ball. Like he throws a very tight spiral. He's got a good throwing motion. Um, and you know, I was thinking about it last night, and I was looking up stuff and looking up his stats. I mean, well, you know, he only had two years in Denver. Um, it, they weren't terrible. He had a lot of interceptions. And I'm, si- but I'm sitting here thinking like. Maybe Trevor Simeon is Trevor Simeon. Honestly, maybe he's a great quarterback, and we've just never known that because he <laughs> was stuck in Denver, Denver, and Denver didn't know what the hell to do with him. And then he went to Jets, and I mean, there's no way anybody's going to have to be successful <laughs> with the Jets. The Jets, that's right. And I, I'm wondering if, like, maybe Trevor Simeon has always been a pretty decent quarterback, and it's again. Going back to Sean Payton and how Sean Payton is just this freaking football quarterbacking genius guru, whatever the hell you want to call him. But if anybody's going to be able to turn Trevor Simeon into uh, anything, it would be Sean Payton. Um, Wouldn't wouldn't that be true of Taysom Hill too, though? Well, yeah, no, but they're different players. I mean, well, I that's, here's my question. Somebody asked it. Somebody said in the chat room they think Taysom Hill is a better option for Tennessee. So, it, so. He, I don't want to. Sean, I don't want to get into this where we're where we're choosing Sean, quarterbacks well, based Sean on Payton the opponent. Say, I don't did, do not want to do that. He did say that it might be matchup dependent. He did say that in his press conference. So, but here's the thing, Andrew. I look at Tennessee. They had. They didn't. They everybody. If you if you didn't see the game yesterday, you'd be like, oh, Tennessee kicked the shit out of the Rams, and they kind of did. But Manigan. they didn't have 200 yards of offense. Yeah. And I look at the Tennessee game. I'm like, 
yeah, Taysom might give you a chance for bigger plays with his scrambling, but I think I want the guy that's going to not put the ball at risk because the game for the Saints to win in Tennessee, like it's probably going to be like a 17 13. 17, well, you know, 19, 16 thing, game. Right now, you got like, this is a crazy stat. The Saints are number one in the NFL, giving up 3.2 yards per carry. Number one, best in the league. No one stops the run better than the Saints. 3.2 yards per carry. Uh, the Titans are in, in, in the top 10 worst. Um, they're, they're number 10, so that, but they're, they give up 4.5 yards per carry. <laughs> so you can run on that team. And I, I wonder if Sean Payton is considering this. Like, I don't know where Taysom Hill's head is at, and I mean that literally. Like, I, with his concussion, I don't know if Sean Payton feels like, yeah, we can run it twelve times with with Taysom Hill, and, and he, he's going to take blows, you know, in, in between the tackles. Uh, I don't know if he's prepared to take headshots like that. Um, but if he's recovered from his concussion and he can go and, and beat Taysom Hill. I wonder if Sean Payton's tempted. And look, maybe it's not he starts. Maybe it's he's just his usage is ramped up to a significant degree. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I, you know, the last thing I want to talk about briefly is. Hey, hold Saints on. All I want to say is, I, look, ahead. I'm fine with using Taysom. I'm fine with him having a heavy usage. That's fine. But. I want Simeon making the throw. I mean, I mean, when when we're talking about making throws on the sidelines, down deep, whatever, blah blah blah. Like, I want him making the throws. That's, I think he's a better quarterback than Taysom when it comes to just your traditional passing quarterback. Yeah, well, uh, that's for sure. I agree. The pass rush, Andrew. I feel like. I can't decide whether it was good. If it was good yesterday, it was bad, or Matt Ryan was really good, or he just avoided it. Like, but I look at their losses, and every loss the Saints have, I think the pass rush, you say it was either bad, non existent, or mediocre in all three of the losses. Are you concerned about the pass rush going forward, or is this just kind of like what we're going to get? It's just Cam Jordan is old. Marcus two first is inconsistent. It's just going to be some weeks. It's just not going to be great. It's it's just one of those things that even though we think, think of the defense the is really good, good it man. Is, the pass rush yeah, is inconsistent. I, I thought it was good in this game. I thought it was really good. Uh, I just think they didn't get home. You know, um, obviously they had those two sacks late, um, but I, I think they were putting pressure on Matt Ryan all day. He just would sidestep it. He would avoid it. I mean, he was pretty good at that. Um, but no, I still think they got a good rotation going. Get, getting Onyemata back has been huge. Uh, I think he's going to continue to make a big difference. Davenport's playing well, and Cam Jordan's gotten a sack in three straight games. Yeah. You know, Passigno's been good as a, as a sub. Uh, we really haven't seen much from Peyton Turner yet, but I'm hoping that's going to come. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't hate the pass rush. Yeah, it's been a little inconsistent, but... <laughs> there was... <laughs> You gotta finish plays. That's the main thing. Is you know, we're, we're sure. I mean, they're he's he's making them look awesome because you know the, these clips. You know, they all show the sacks and everything. But uh, there were a number of plays where Onyemata and two in particular had whiffs. Or it's just you gotta finish those plays. You know, there and was, so I, I think that was the big thing in this game. <laughs> there was a moment. You know, I sit right behind the Saints bench, and there was a moment where Peyton Turner and Marcus Davenport were standing up on the sidelines next to each other. And I almost went to go take a picture just to save it for posterity because I know that both of them will be injured in like one week and they'll both never be playing again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's never going to last. The two of them. It makes me always want to vomit. Uh, it drives me nuts. Hello, I wish they could stay healthy. Friend. I know, I know. I, 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 I hope they do. I hope they do, but I'm not optimistic. I got to say, like, while the violin thing is still funny, uh, it, nothing will ever top playing that. No. Yeah, as no. Kevin talks about the doctor <laughs> dumping. I wish Kevin was here now to give us. I mean, it's not update. just the, the hilarity of. Hey, Tomas, check the timestamp on this. It's not just the hilarity of those two things 
that happening together like it was the timing like you thomas was you were so quick with that it happened boom right when he started talking and it was just it was, was beautiful it i was, was really i was really looking forward to some uh, aaron Rodgers talk from kevin tonight but oh well so yeah he is fuming about aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he he's bubbling like yeah. aaron Rodgers. The thing about it is I wish it would have happened in the off season because it's a great off season topic. But now like the Saints have so much going on and like Aaron Rodgers, he's just kind of a douche. And he's one of those people that thinks he's super smart and but he's not really smart. He's just kind of clever. And it's just it's just annoying. Although I did love Pete Davidson doing an imitation of him on Saturday Night Live. That was really funny. But final question. <laughs> final thing, Dave. Before we get to the hotline, which is oh, wow. really good. Can I just make one comment about uh, Aaron Rodgers real Go quick? Go ahead. <laughs> I, find it, I find it so annoying that, like, you know, every time something happens on Twitter, it's like one political side, you know, will be like, oh, well, when my guy, my side does it, you know, everyone goes nuts. But when this guy does this, you know, everyone gives him a pass, you know, and it's like this whole thing, right? Like, both both political sides always do this. And... People were going nuts on Twitter saying, and it was like, Ruggs, Ruggs isn't getting any grief. For, oh, yeah, right. You right, know, right. driving 156 miles an hour and killing someone, right. and everyone's killing Aaron Rodgers because of his own personal choice or whatever. Right, and talking and, about and, it. And I'm just like, yeah, that's because no one knows or cares who Henry Ruggs is. No, it's like, because... Other, other than the football junkies, like, no, no one knows... Henry Ruggs. That's right. Everyone well, I mean, that's, knows Aaron Rodgers. Like, if Aaron Rodgers drove 150 miles an hour and killed someone, it would be front page news, and they would be talking about it a lot more than the vaccine. Or if Henry Ruggs, and if Henry Ruggs was anti, if Henry Ruggs was on you, your, it would not be on news anywhere. If not Henry Ruggs Vegas. was on our TV doing State Farm commercials, it would be. So uh, this has a lot more to do with. Platform yeah. and fame of the individual. Well, like, I mean, like, get, get out are, of my timeline with that BS. People are talking about him more, I think, because like everybody, I think we're all in agreement. Henry Ruggs uh, is, is a jerk, and uh, <laughs> what he did was deplorable. And like, it's like open and shut. Like, okay, case closed. Yeah, we're all I mean, in agreement here. But like the whole Aaron Rodgers situation, you have people on, you have a lot a of people on both sides of the. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. That's, uh, that's a big part of it. Well, the thing with Aaron Rodgers, too, is that he, he, you know, say, you know, we make fun of unvaccinated corner, Andrew, but say what you want about unvaccinated corner. He didn't shy away from it. Like he didn't he didn't lie to us and tell us that he's vaccinated. And then three weeks ago, be like, oh, yeah, he got he got he's got the Rona. Like, no, I, I, I think that was like part of someone, the thing with Aaron Rodgers. Like, Aaron like, Rodgers lied about being vaccinated. Like, say what you want about Lamar Jackson, who's not vaccinated and got COVID twice, and other and, and, and uh, Carson Wentz, the quarterback for the Colts. Like, they have guys that are like, I'm not getting vaccinated. And agree with and it Arnold. or disagree with it. Yeah. At least they're honest about it. I think that was the main thing with me with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. Um- I, I, it's funny. I think I, Dave, actually, I think there was one NFL player that tweeted, man, is either a media person or an NFL player that tweeted about Henry Ruggs, like, let the guy break, like, we all make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did <laughs> see something like it. I mean, like, someone is dead. Like, yeah. seriously? Like, no, I mean, like, like find, find me a break. and a dog. And really? a dog. I was, I mean, I was going to make a joke. Like, find me the person who doesn't think Henry Ruggs is a jerk and an asshole. <laughs> I guess maybe there. you found that. Yeah, I guess you yeah. found him. There's one yeah. guy. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Aaron Rodgers is he's annoying. So, listen, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to segue. I don't know how to segue from Aaron Rodgers and Henry Ruggs to the to, hot our tremendous sponsor symbol, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't Maybe know how to. Say, I don't know. I know. I know how to for later. Save it for I mean, later. Yeah, he, he, Ralph, you just go. Aaron Rodgers, he sucks. You know what doesn't suck? You know what? The, you know what doesn't <laughs> suck? Symbol yeah. is the stock. Is the <laughs> is the sports stock market that allows you to profit off your sports knowledge. Two ways to make money. Thank you, Andrew, on Symbol 
First, every time a team you own wins, you earn cash, win payout. Second, just like the stock market, if you think a team is going to increase in value, you can buy low, sell high for a profit. Use the promo code SD to make your first deposit risk-free. That means even if you lose money or just decide the market isn't for you, Symbol will refund, refund your initial deposit, no questions asked. They are doing a fun thing where they gave us $500. Any money we make over $500 at the end of the football season, they will match it uh, char- to a charity donation of our choice. Uh, our por- portfolio is a disaster. Cincinnati is crashed. Uh, I liquidated the Saints and Pelican stock as requested because Andrew and Dave know that anytime I gamble or in, am involved with the Saints or Pelicans in any sports betting kind of way, it goes terrible for both of those teams. I liquidated yes. it. So what do we need to do? Like, What team should we buy to try to get our portfolio in symbol back on the right path? Did like, we, we all like, agreed to buy Cincinnati? No, I just did oh. that. It was reckless oh. and stupid on my part. Oh, well, I mean, no, I, mean I, I would have agreed with that a week ago. I would say Seattle is something you buy, you know, with Russell Wilson coming back. All right, well, we need to buy something. We can't sell something. We don't own the Cardinals, do we? I would maybe be selling the Cardinals. <laughs> we now. don't own the Cardinals. Right. That would have been a good purchase a month ago. I would say buy Seattle. So we're buying. We're I would buy not, We're buying three invest- shares of Seattle. I would not invest any money in the Saints. Do we have any money in the Saints? We have one share. We oh, I liquidated right. three of the shares. Good. All right. Good. Good. So Very I'll good. buy Seattle. Support symbol. Give it a try, guys. Use the code SD. They're a great fun sponsor. Uh, you should support them. I mean, the um, Saints. The Saints are literally the definition of like a volatile <laughs> stock. I mean, they are right. up and down, up and down. <laughs> they're they're a nineteen nineties dot com stock, baby. <laughs> we should buy them though. So here's the thing. The Saints feel like a this, cryptocurrency. The hotline last week yeah, they're was like amazing. my Litecoin. <laughs> so I'm not going to pretend that the hotline this week is as tremendous is, is as Is Dave the Tampa in the bathroom game. again? No, I'm in the pantry. I'm getting candy. Shut up. <laughs> so the, the hotline I'm against Tampa bladder. was amazing. I don't know if the hotline this week is that good because when they lose, it, it can't be tremendous. But we have. Some tremendous jokes in this hotline. And for the first time in a long time, we have a female caller to the hotline. Thank you, female caller, for chiming in. Uh, Thomas, play the hotline for the people. It's time for this week's hottest takes from the Saints Happy Hour Hotline. I love how we start the game off four runs, and bulldozing all over them 40 yards. Three passes, nothing. Dropped by Troutman, sort of dropped by Stills. Oh, and then we should have got a pick right there. But, of course, Garner Johnson has no f***ing hands. It's early, though. Nobody has to eat a dick just yet. Hello, boys. It's Adam, the radio voice, calling you from just outside of Ocean City, Maryland. (laughs) Well, uh, Ralph, you said it best. I live and die with the Saints, but I've also got the mentality this week that you just have to ride the wave. And they didn't come to play today. They had a hangover from Tampa Bay. But uh, five and three, there could be worse things. You, they, they could be Detroit, but uh, still stings when uh, they lose to the Falcons. But uh, it, is, it is what it is. They didn't come to play today. They went through the motion. The Falcons were desperate. So uh, on to Tennessee next week. Who that? All right. There's 215 left in the third. And Simeon has looked all right. But uh, Troutman has not. F- Troutman, cut a mid game. Uh, again, f- Troutman and censorship Troutman who that hey Troutman hater back uh I'm I might not even be the only one but wow look no pressure Troutman can make catches thanks for (laughs) not being useful at all I can't I just can't anymore being a Saints fan (laughs) is just every emotion rolled all into one and you never know what you're gonna get I turned the freaking game off after the sack fumble, they come back to just stab me in the heart with a loss. I, I don't understand it. Why do we put why do we put ourselves through this every week? It's glorious, it's heartbreaking, it's just uh live to see another day, I guess. On to the Titans. Well, I guess we know now what uh a team without a quarterback, uh wide receivers and uh 
Well, pretty much most things on offense, not named a ground game, look like. Uh, that was painful. Uh, Saints had more drop balls than a classroom of sixth graders, and uh, that was uh, that was just painful. Uh, future Hall of Famer Matt Ryan uh, played a great game, and that's the most disgusting thing I had to say today. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a painful rest of the season, I think. So drink up, everybody. Cheers. God, sorry, Ralph. I'm sorry you busted ass to get into town to see that. That was just f***ing awful. Oh. That um, was nice. Of, that was nice of him. Wait, um... So oh, what I forgot what I was gonna. Oh, I forgot what I was gonna. I ask. like the joke uh, about Ralph, the ball. Remember, I, I donated these two that was tickets to, to our listener. Do you remember that, Ralph? When I on the uh, this on the uh, green room, Spotify green room, our buddy from St. Louis, the the, the Kevin. No, no uh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's I'm I'm tired and I'm That's ready for bed. That's the worst joke uh, I've ever heard. <laughs> I donated my two season tickets to one of our listeners uh, who had never been to a Saints game That's before, right. and, and he went. And I mean, he could, mother fucking Teresa. I can't believe that's what he had to deal with for his first Saints game. I feel very He's, sad he, for him. Um, Just torture him. No, I, I think, think he, he had a uh, good time in New Orleans, so he had a good time. Well, the Troutman hater guy. Uh, he's my. I think he might be my spirit animal. I love that. I love the <laughs> Trout, Troutman hater here again. Just Troutman uh, hater, yeah. you're the MVP. Yeah. By the way, we he's had to clip. Out, we had. To, <laughs> We had to clip out like th- I had to clip out like three Troutman uh, voicemail. You can't threaten to murder the guy and his family. Okay, <laughs> I can't. Like we do, we do have some limits on this show. Like I had like three different oh people. Like I'm gonna, wow. I'm gonna hunt Troutman down and kill him. I'm like, dude, you, you, I can't put that yeah, yeah. on. Like we, like, we don't have him. hardly any Get standards, but like. Physical violence against <laughs> Saints players, that's, that's, we can't go there. Just sick, draw sick, sick, life sick people. <laughs> Mentally <laughs> sick. Sick. Um, uh, yeah, well, oh, I was disappointed you didn't play mine. I called during the game. <laughs> Nikolai, that's pretty good. He said throw him back. That's pretty <laughs> funny. That's, that's pretty good. I, uh, I called during the game from the stands with the crowd cheering. Uh... Right when they scored the go-ahead touchdown, because I thought they were gonna. Uh, oh, look. you know what, Dave? That must have been the one that I saw that said, "I read the transcripts." Oh, it said, "Ah, no, it said, ah, no, it said ah, no transcript available." Ah, so I just assumed oh, that it didn't record. What? But oh, I <laughs> you gotta listen to those. Ah, I, so Why is that quality so terrible? Next it does not I'll sound listen. like that on my phone. Oh yeah, I like I was I was calling from the game from my seat and it was like all loud and I'm screaming into the phone, twenty-four to six, twenty-four to six. But then uh <laughs> then it didn't happen. Nothing happened. That's the worst joke I've ever heard. <laughs> that is oh, the worst joke C- I've ever heard. CDW says happy Tom Dempsey Day. Today is like the fiftieth anniversary of Tom Dempsey's kick. How about that. How about that? No yeah. spoilers, no spoilers. We have a listener, oh, remember Ralph? He, that, his first game ever. Question. That's right. We did it. We did a patron spotlight with him. He was his first yeah. game ever for Tom Dempsey kick. Mm, amazing. That's right. But uh, speaking of Saints, you know it's Tappy Tom Dempsey Day, and that. Speaking of that, it's Saints trivia time. Thomas, I'm going to the pantry, aka my secret bathroom. Dave's going to the secret bathroom, but tell us, play the okay, trivia. Okay, so, so trivia isn't about Tom Dempsey, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not yet, at least. Uh, trivia question is sponsored by Budweiser, by the way. Who is the shortest player to play for the Saints? Oh, interesting. Hmm. Is Deontay bigger than Martin Gramatica? Ooh. Oh, good, good. Martin and that Grimatic. silhouette doesn't look like Sproles. Oh, yeah. Well, is Sproles or Deontay, who's bigger? I would have said Sproles is bigger than Deontay. Ooh. I'm going to say. How big was I'm Tommy gonna... Lee Lewis? The Saints had that... some kicker in the 70s. I think he was the kicker for the Dolphins in the Super Bowl when they went undefeated. Gary Yipper. Yippian, I think, yeah, or... Gary Yipremian. That's going to be yeah. my guess. Um, 
I'm going to say, oh, that's why it's spoiler. I'm saying Martine Gramatica because he said spoiler alert for Tom Dempsey and he was thinking kicker. I'm saying Martine Gramatica. Dude, that's silhouette. <laughs> Martin, Martine Gramatica's head is like nine times the size of that guy's head. Yeah, he's like a walking silhouette. candy apple. Yeah. If it's your premium, Ralph cheated again. Remember how he cheated last week? <laughs> I didn't cheat. <laughs> Fuck all of you people. Apparently uh, he didn't. Apparently. I didn't cheat. Allegedly. So who I is it? Tom, my man. You're, you're going Grammatica? So what's the final answer? You can't take credit. I'm the one that said it. I said Grammatica. Yeah. You, you stole my idea. All right, Grammatica? fine. I'll take, auto, I'll take Automatica. Grammatica? <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say before I reveal the question that... I'm going to go uh, with Toby Gowan. Ooh, that's a good Badridge said that question was going to trick you. <laughs> Let this be a hint, guys. Maybe you can change your answer. Ooh, trick, trick, play. Ooh, trick it might play. be Mark McMillan. Trick question. Trick no, question. no. Mark, it, McMillan, it, Mark McMillan no. was 5'8". Oh, okay. Um... All right, A, who the hell is Mark McMillan? And B, how the hell do you know exactly how tall he was? <laughs> <laughs> look, look it up. He's 5'8". I'm not balls. doubting you. I'm not doubting you. I just remember you. him. Be, he was a corner for the Saints like in the 90s, and I just remember we would always talk about how are we supposed to win with a 5'8 corner. He was actually pretty good. Mark McMillan was a good corner. But... Who, was, who was talking about this? He was good everywhere but with the Saints. I mean, just Saints, Saints fans, and like I'd go to the games, and we would oh. talk. Like, yeah, I mean, anyway. Um, this was pre-internet. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would go Deontay. I, I can't remember a guy younger. Oh. This smaller Aldridge than says Deontay. McMillan is five seven. Oh, McMillan. oh wow. Oh. Okay, all right. Well, I was, I was an inch. He's taller than Dave. <laughs> I'm like five ten. <laughs> And some change, I think. Who is the tallest on this podcast? Ralph, how tall are you? I think I am. How tall well, we, are you, Thomas? We've never, we've never even seen a, pic, a, a picture of Thomas, let alone video. I, I'm 6'2". I'm yeah, I'm 6'1". Yeah. You got me by an inch. I am not Thomas. I'm not going to believe it till I see it. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> All right, can we reveal the answer? Yeah, what's Move the on? answer here? Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, so the final answer is... <laughs> what? <laughs> How <are> okay, <laughs> so uh, this was a running back that played Picture for the Saints from 1973 to 1974, and this... This was the only picture I could find. Dude, you couldn't even find a picture of the dude. I don't this, think he's real. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want to do the silhouette because it would be too obvious. So you picked you know? Muxy Bogues instead. <laughs> yeah. Old time football pictures are the best. They're like, they're all action y. Great. And a little bonus trivia from uh, uh, Badrich, who came up with it during the. Show name the player that led the Saints in receiving but recorded under 500 receiving yards. Oh, dude, Jesus, Marquez Calloway. <laughs> I'm <laughs> no, is it's that going the, to is be. That the, is that the picture right there? Is that the guy? No, 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 that's uh, the oh, answer to our main <laughs> trivia question. It's about to be Alvin Kamara, dude. It's gotta be, it's it's gotta be. It's got to be somebody from like the '83 the season when they only played oh. nine games or some bullshit. Oh, oh yeah, like Lindsey Scott or something. Yeah, you it's got to be. I don't. I, I won't cheat and look it up, but it's got to be somebody from 1983. I'll go Lindsey Scott. That's a good guess. No, it was Guido Merkins. Oh, Guido Merkins. 81. Oh, wow. He recorded That's 459 incredible. yards on 29 catches and had that is only. Awful. One touchdown. Dude, that was the year West Chandler played only four <laughs> games. Dude, that is so sad. 20... West Chandler, yeah. Not even 500 yards receiving. Jesus Christ. And, and, we, also we... Have, and we also have a follow-up question. Which we That was the follow-up question. No, no, that's the follow-up question to the follow-up question. <laughs> which receiver led the Saints in receiving but had less than 400 yards receiving? 
Oh, gee, it's got to be. It's got to be <laughs> little little Jordan Humphrey. <laughs> no, it's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be somebody from 1983 because they only played nine games. No, but close. I'm gonna say tie in the sky. What? From Who's 19. That? It's like Ty Who's... Willingham, I think. No, no. Ty Montgomery. No, Ty something. Ty Montgomery. Ty Montgomery. <laughs> now. Yeah. Ty in the sky was his nickname. But I'm gonna. No. All right. Who well, is every it? every listener under the age of 35 is. I know this off. trivia. This trivia sucked. <laughs> Even, do better, he, do better, even, Matt. Even Chad doesn't know, man. Even Chad doesn't know. It was Jeff it? G- Jeff Groff in 1982. I've never who even, had I never even heard of him. 383 yards receiving. Jesus Christ, Bump never heard of really him. hated throwing the ball. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty rare that you name a Saints player I've never heard of, and I've never heard of that guy. That's wow, wow. So. Let's get to the questions, Thomas. Hit the music. The questions. I am totally fading. Thomas. Uh, just a like Andrew's webcam. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm here. I'm here. What next? <laughs> okay. Uh, first question comes from Bulky. And Bulky asks, <laughs> "When are we gonna make Ralph stop going to games?" Dude, this is unfair, but I think it might be needed. The Saints. Haven't won a game I've attended since the season opener in 2019. They are currently on a three-game losing streak. I have watched them lose to the Falcons twice in 2019 and this year. And I watched them lose to the Giants this year. I I might not need to go to any Mm. more games. Mm. Tough but fair, Valky. Tough but fair. At least don't go back to Saints Falcons, you know? (laughs) Yeah. All right. What next? Okay, next question from Saints to Death. And (laughs) he asks, what is your favorite misspelling variation of Simeon you've seen so far? (laughs) <laughs> I'm oh. not touching that one with a 10 foot pole. Semen. I mean, what else is there besides semen? Yeah. Sea made is fun. Um, you know, there's this, this different see, one. But, see me in these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what next? I mean, I like the nickname T Money Sizzle. Yeah, that's a good nickname. Okay, next question. Uh, comes from Biloxi Blues and he asks has the play of the O-line met your expectations for this season or fallen no. below them? Way below. Way below. This is supposed line. to be the best line in football. Yeah. It's good, but it's... Pete's gotta play better. Pete's gotta play better. <laughs> listen, listen. Pete's gotta play better. <laughs> you missed the soundbite, Rolf. I know. I don't, I, I don't it. have it. I don't have it. <laughs> play it. Play it. I don't know if I have it. Mm. Nah, I yeah. don't have it anymore. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, what's next, Thomas? Looks like Tulane alum uh, Darnell Mooney just caught the uh, game-winning catch for the Chicago Bears. Okay, Bears. next Bears. question from Saints to Death 2, guys. And this is the Tom Dempsey, spoiler. In honor of the anniversary of Tom Dempsey's 63-yard field goal, what historical play do you think was the first to top that kick as the best play in Saints history? Hakeem. The, the Gleason block. Mm, you don't think Hakeem first? Yeah, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, first. I mean, that happened. The first to trumpet? Yeah, yeah. Hakeem drops the ball, yeah. 
I mean, you could say Akeem. I think the Saints goal line stand in Pittsburgh to clinch the winning season. That's a pretty great call by Jim Henderson. But I think it's probably it's got to be Hakeem. It's got to be. Yeah. I mean, but, but but listen, man. For the first, my entire childhood, like the the Tom Dempsey kick was all the Saints had. That and Gilliam running the opening kickoff back. That was yep. it. And that and was the Arch- Saints and Archie. Yeah, but Archie was just like comedy. It was just yeah. like Archie getting the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh yeah, that's what the Saints did that was good. So, uh, what next? Okay, last question. This has to be like one of the fastest question segments yeah. of all time. Uh, well, we had to make up for that incredibly long uh, trivia segment. That's yeah. Right. It all evens out in the wash. It's all Badrich's fault. That's why he gets no questions today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> last question from Bullsmith5050. If Adam Trotman was hiking naked and barefoot through the Alaskan winter, would he at least be able to catch a cold? <laughs> That's pretty good. I don't know who this Troutman guy you're talking about is, but uh, the fish guy. Uh, yeah, Big he could bust. catch. He could. He could. He could catch a cold, but not if his life was depending on it, I guess. That's what I would Troutman say. don't even need to be vaccinated because he can't catch shit. No. Ooh, <laughs> Damn. Nice one, nice one. I'm just hey, Tomas, 88... check the timestamp on this. 88% of the What next? Unbelievable. So that's it. Sorry. No, nothing. <laughs> so now we got to get into maybe, maybe when uh, Aaron Rodgers said that he was immunized, he meant that he uh, had a little blood transfusion with Adam Troutman. <laughs> Damn. Mm. <laughs> Although so it didn't go work, so maybe not. The Saints currently, gentlemen, are a three point underdog at mm. the Tennessee Titans. By the way, Tennessee is seven and two, and they have won five straight, including four wins over playoff teams from 2020. Uh, the Titans are rolling. So, Andrew, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to pick the Titans here. I think it's going to be another close one. I think it's going to come down to uh, the final two minutes again. Uh, So I I think the Saints will do a decent job of staying in it, but I just don't trust the offensive line right now on the road. I think they've been fortunate to have Simeon at quarterback at home, Uh, but I think the walls come down a little bit for Simeon in this game. So... I think it's gonna be close. You know, Saints will fight hard, but I'm picking the Titans to win this one, twenty to seventeen. And my turd of the game is gonna be Marshawn Lattimore. He's gonna give up a long touchdown pass, um, and I think the criticism of his in- inconsistency and his uh, struggles after this new contract are going to ramp up a little bit. Dave, by the way, it's four 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 across the board. For us with points. If you well, Kevin know. has zero, right? Well, Kevin has zero. Right. <laughs> don't forget There's about no, Kevin. Um, the only thing I don't like about the scoring system is like the, the score rarely fluctuates because I mean, we're rarely ever like getting anything right. So it's yeah. like, yeah. And you are not locking it, anything in. Yeah, well, I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting. It's hard. That's the thing is it's very hard to lock in anything with the How same am I supposed to know with this know, team? With I know. Yeah. It's I know, Monday. Have, like, like, the thing is, Thomas. We got to pick the game on Monday. Deontay Harris might get suspended. Too. We I don't know. know who's the quarterback. No, they might get no biscuits, man. I know. They I might hate, get I Beckham tomorrow. You don't know. I, know. I mean, I know. I, yeah. So that's Things the other can reason. Change, I hate, man. I know. It's not fair that we have to make these on Monday morning before we even have our. Yeah, I'm still coffee. sad and eaten and broken after losing to the Falcons. You know, yeah. I may feel differently on Friday. Yeah. Well, and again, so this is, I'm making this, uh, we're making this prediction based on no OBJ. Uh, but if didn't, OBJ, hold on, did, didn't Kevin pick the Falcons to win? Or was no, that you? Uh, Ralph did. No. Ralph, tied it, Ralph tied it up with his, with his Falcons. Yeah, but I, but I picked the Saints in my column for Channel 4. You do that every week. He, Ralph, he's the ultimate <laughs> flip flipper. 
Yeah, you're like the it's John Kerry. He's like, I just, I want to make sure I don't look like an idiot on you're one. You're like the pie. John I Kerry of my mind. Nation. Yeah. By Wednesday, Thursday, I changed. Stick my to mind. your convictions, Ralph. My I don't God. have any convictions on Monday morning. <laughs> I have zero <laughs> convictions on Monday morning. Um. All right. Well, anyway, you know, based on everything we've seen this season, I. We really should be picking the Saints because this is a game they they probably should be losing. The Titans are a better team. Uh, they're a more complete team. They're definitely an AFC playoff team. Uh, but I am no Derrick not... Henry. Yeah, I know, no I know. Henry. And uh, so I'm gonna pick the Titans. I'm gonna pick the Titans to win, even though it's very likely the Saints are gonna just somehow pull some juju out of their. Do do, but um, I, I'm so I'm saying Titans twenty eight, Saints seventeen, and uh, I'm saying the turn of the game is gonna be Taysom. I'm saying he's gonna like have like a fumble, mm-hmm. maybe two fumbles. He's gonna get mm-hmm. used a little bit more. Uh, so we uh, both got the Saints putting up seventeen points, huh? That's uh, about uh, as good as I think they can do. Yeah, I mean, come on. With these receivers, is again unless unless something changes with the wide receiving core, uh, I don't uh, you know. Just you wait, Dave. Just you uh, wait. I'll, it's I'll it's my it. turn to pick. Yep. Speaking of things changing with the wide receiver core, you people are wrong. Okay, I Tennessee, they down. are ripe for a down flat game. They've won five in a row. They've been playing great. They've been playing a bunch of playoff teams in a row. They are ripe to play flat. The Saints are going to go into Tennessee and kick Tennessee's ass. And you know why? Because the star of the game is going to be Odell Beckham. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember the score that I picked, Thomas, but I know my star of the game is Beckham. Jesus. You wasn't I, hope, I, hope you, I hope you lock that in. I didn't lock it in. But it's <laughs> 27-17 Saints. Wow. Star of the no game goals. is OBJ, baby. Let's well, go. I have another prediction. Ralph is going to pick the Titans to win in his column. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, cap, Captain Obvious. No, Andrew, I'm holding out writing the WWL column because I want to write 800 words of just me being ridiculously excited about the Saints getting OBJ. So I'm, I've, I'm holding off, holding off, holding off until that's decided. So, uh, Thomas, what what Kevin do? Now you should guys predict Kevin's prediction. I, I Kevin definitely I, picked the Titans. I, I usually get Kevin's prediction right. I yeah. think Kevin is going to stick with a Saints victory here. No I, way. Think, he the I think he's going to pick the Saints 21-7. Oh, wait, is he doing the opposite? I don't I never remember. Titans. Let's see them. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Hmm. Pretty close to ours. Oh. What is, what is his the third of the game? 30-20. 30, 20. So I, I think it's. I think his third of the game is going to be Andrews Pete because he doesn't know that he's on IR. That's right. <laughs> his third of the game is going to be Taysom, like mine. No, he's he's gonna be his Pete. third of the game is going to be Jameis because he thinks he's still on the active roster. <laughs> nope he he sat next to Andrew during the test, guys. Oh, Lattimore. Oh, Lattimore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mm. Interesting. What a cheater. He re- he read the recap. On the that's right, he's just basing it on Andrew's grades, so he's, he's updating yeah. on who's injured and whatnot. <laughs> Kevin doesn't eat the tape, he just eats the tape of the guy that eats the tape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thomas, what's the clip of the week? Okay, we had like six clips last week, so there's progress, but I think you can do. Better guys, if you don't hey, know how to, if clip, the clip of the week next week isn't me sneezing and coughing so hard <laughs> that my headset falls off, I'll be very disappointed in you people. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know how to clip, there's a clip icon to the left of the full screen icon when you hover the live stream window, then you an editor opens up and you can adjust the duration of the clip and give it an appropriate name. So, uh I forgot what was, what was the clip of the week. I I have Great. I have no idea what it was. Let's let's see. <laughs> let's see. This show together. We had technical problems at the beginning. Thomas solved them all. Dave's That's going to the bathroom. Well, you had. Dave's going to the bathroom. <laughs> Dave's going to the bathroom. He's going to take a dump. 
<laughs> put the exclamation point on this. Look, look get... there it is. That's the bath. <laughs> you can do hey, it again this week. You did that last week also? I forgot yeah. about that. So this is three weeks in a row now. You, um, you, guys, almost, of you guys almost didn't notice this week. I tried to get away with it. Almost. It's sneaky. Uh, well, I, mean, I don't even know if I had to go to the bathroom last week. But Dreamo, week. Dreamo says, hold up. Did Dave take a deuce? No. Where have where, where you been, man? This, uh... <laughs> where have you been, Dreamo? You've been uh, mailing today, bombs sure. to people? This anthrax. Uh, this week, I really did have to go. So, <laughs> so by the way, before we get out of here, I want to thank everybody. We've had we've had we're having a ton of new listeners. I hope that the new listeners have listened all the way to the end. We set a record today. We had fourteen hundred downloads today on the free RSS feed. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, what about we Malta? haven't had new content since oh, last yes. Wednesday? What about people Malta? are checking out the free content? Become a patron so you get all the content. Just saying. What's give up? Us with Malta? Ma- give us a Malta update, Ralph. Malta yeah, is Whatever. breaking my heart. We are nineteen. <sighs> oh, jeez. Oh, oh, I mean, oh, and I'm not going to name names. There are four Saints podcasts ahead of us. What? So it's disgraceful. Really? Yeah. In Malta, it's disgraceful. Jesus. Really? Disgraceful. Wow. Malta, you break my heart. I you didn't even stop. know there were You four need of to us. stop sending Thomas all those Polish sausages until yeah. we're back. <laughs> I didn't even know there were four of those things, I guess. I mean. So. Hey, Bobbish has I, already posted two clips in the Discord clips channel, by the way. Well, probably me going to the bathroom again. Dr. Thomas says the nougat runs straight through Dave, runs straight through <laughs> you, uh, eat it straight to the toilet. Right. Uh, no, unfortunately, I don't think that's true. I think it's coagulating around my heart. Like shit through a goose. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, Kevin, who's MIA, for Dave, for Andrew, for Thomas, back in Poland running the show. He was on it tonight. Executive producer extraordinaire, the best in the business. Guys, remember, kids, don't shoot your dick off. Until next week. <laughs> The bar is closed.